We're starting today with Lunar Diplomacy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm surprised we haven't done this quest sooner. We've been running around without the Lunar Spellbook. It's not super useful in many situations, but it has its uses in some places. Specifically, the newer spells that they released uh, within the last year, I want to say, such as Firing Urns, Sifting Soil, Making Molten Glass, those sorts of things. So at the start of this episode, here's where our stats are sitting. We're doing rather well. I don't remember what our stats were at the last episode because, as is usually the case, I recorded this footage, like, maybe two weeks ago. I'm just falling real far behind with the commentary. I really don't know how people figured out the cursed ship part of this quest without a quest guide. You... I'm guessing it'd be trial and error, and you just have to use the lantern on every single part of the ship until you find the four uh, glyphs that were written that cursed the ship. Yeah, well, I don't know. Anyway, we're here on Lunar Isle. This quest was released in 2006, and yet when you examine this log pile, it says, like a pile of memes. This was the original definition of what a meme was. Basically, a collection of memories and cultural thoughts, kind of like... The graffiti during World War II that said Kilroy was here. That was a meme. A meme before people called them memes. These old RuneScape quests really liked trial and error. I'm glad they stopped putting these in the game, and I'm glad this, in general, has stopped being common in video games as a whole. Trial and error isn't fun. It's just tedious and boring. We now have access to the Lunar Spellbook, but we don't have access to all the spells. We need to do Livid Farm, which is a thing no one likes, and do Dream Mentor to unlock some of the other spells. So we're moving on to Dream Mentor. It's a very short quest and it's a very easy quest. But this is the reason why we got the extra goat weed ages and ages ago. We need an extra goat weed from Troll Stronghold to complete this quest. It's been sitting on our bank ever since. The fight was super easy, it's not even worth talking about. The main reason why I did this quest was because I bought a livid plant item from the deep sea fishing traveling merchant guy. And you need to do these quests to use it. So first we talk with Pauline, do the tutorial for Livid Farm, which we're never going to do because Livid Farm sucks, it's very boring. And then we can claim the Livid Plant item and get some Livid Plant points, Livid Farm points rather. This minigame does give some useful spells, specifically one that can teleport you to the Trollheim herb patch. It makes farm runs very, very quick. Of course you need to get about 350,000 Livid Farm points to unlock that spell and that could take you something like 10 to 15 hours of playing this game to get we're definitely going to keep our eyes out for when the traveling merchant has a livid plant to sell that can give you about at most 30,000 livid farm points and that's much better than actually playing this game we're going to do the mountain daughter quest because we want to do more of the fremenic quests these quests are a lot easier now that the liar can be charged with 50 charges instead of three quest completed and we move on the Fremenic Isles, a classic quest. It's the quest that rewards the Helm of Nate's Knot. A useless item now, but was once best in slot for melee. Much like Dream Mentor, this quest's boss fight was very easy. Mostly because I put off doing this quest for a while. I usually do this quest at a much earlier level. If you opt to pay this woman's taxes, after the quest you can buy from her Yakide Packs. 20 Yakide Packs per day and you could sell all the Yakite on the Grand Exchange and make about 100k. It's a daily you could do, it's not a lot of GP, but if you're a low level, you might as well. I always remember Glorious Memories being a more significant quest than it actually is, but it's actually very short and very, very trivial. A few XP lamps that I don't remember what we used it on. I think I used them on... Strength. Maybe. To start the next quest, Blood Runs Deep, we needed to complete the easy, medium, and hard Fremenic achievement task sets. So we did. But before we talk about the rewards from the task sets, we're going to collect some stuff from our kingdom. It's been sitting here for almost three weeks. We're going to collect from Advisor Grimm. Not bad. The kingdom is indispensable for Iron Man, especially if you need mahogany logs. For non-iron accounts, it's just a healthy profit. Raw fish sells for a lot, and mahogany logs sell decently well as well. I didn't go for the maple logs because I didn't want to deal with all of the 
seed nests. It can just be kind of annoying, and the seeds you get from it usually aren't that good. I spent about maybe two and a half mil getting all this stuff, and I sold it all for about five and a half mil. It took three weeks to get, but it was a set it and forget it sort of a thing. You just show up to your kingdom once in a while and get your approval rating to 100%, and you're good. One of the caskets contained a court summons. This is a weird mini game. Actually, you know, that's all <laughs> so that's all I have to say is a weird minigame. You can I think there's about twelve court summons in the game and you can be defender or prosecutor. So we did it and uh Yeah. So the reward from the task sets, instead of reading everything, I'm just gonna go through each one that's useful. Charging the liar gives us more charges, and we can remotely contact Fossagrimmon to charge our liar if need be. Our kingdom approval rating grows at a higher rate. We can change our Lyre Teleport to Waterbirth Island, that could be useful. And most importantly, we can change to the Lunar Spellbook at the Kadarn Altar in Prifdinus, instead of running all the way to the Astral Altar on Lunar Isle. Blood Runs Deep is the epic finale of the Fremenic Quest series. I remember it being a lot harder than it actually is. This is a common theme for these Fremenic Quests. It seems we've died, and we talked to Ayr or air, and her character model in the chat head is remarkably detailed, I am surprised. The idea with the Dagonoth Sentinels is to kill them evenly, because if one's health gets too low, the other one will heal it. Or you could stand in between them, kill one, and then kill the other, because if you're in the way, they can't heal each other. So do it that way, it's much easier. This Dagonoth Mother is just like the first one, when she turns blue, use water, when she turns red, use fire. When she dies, she's going to slide around creepily. I suppose this means the wedding is off, but I get to keep the kingdom. Once this quest is complete, you can talk to Chieftain Brunt three times and get 150,000 XP and a combat skill over the level 75. We have 75 prayer, so we picked prayer three times. Every other skill is easy and fast to train. Prayer costs money, so we're going to save money by getting 450,000 prayer XP and getting to level 79 prayer. I had more trouble with this quest than I did with any other quest I've done in this episode. Because I kept forgetting to bring things with me. This is the first time I've had this much trouble with this quest. It was the Joker Bones, man. Those damn Joker Bones. You cook them, you burn them, you marinate them, you do it wrong, you eat them by accident. We hit another milestone at May's Quest Caravan so we can claim another die and hopefully get a fortune component. And we did. Huzzah. This fire giant task got us 80 defense. And that means we have all the levels required to do Bring of Extinction. We're not going to do it just yet. But this is the quest that unlocks Obsidian Gear, which makes the Fight Caves and Fight Kiln much easier. We'll come back to that in the future. We're here in Darkmire training our attack. We're not on a Slayer task, but we got 78 attack, which means we have all the levels required for River of Blood. That's the quest we need to do to unlock the Sun Spear. We're getting close. Time for our Windfall of Invention XP. We have four level 10 items that we're going to disassemble. They're all tier 70, so they should give 459,000 XP each, netting us 63 invention. All of our skills are now base 60. With 63 invention, we can boost and finally research the blueprint for the auto screener we bought ages ago. So I didn't have all the components necessary to make the auto screener. It requires 15 variable components. The problem with variable components is that they're used for basically nothing, they come from everything, and they're super rare. The best way to get them is from Harrowlander Tar. I need to disassemble 1000 Tar to get 8 variable components. It is dumb. But we got all the components we needed and we made the auto screener so when we go back to archaeology we no longer have to deal with soil. I'm sick of soiling myself. The Lord of Vampirium. The penultimate quest in the Vampire quest line, in which we finally get to venture into Castle Dracon and confront Lord Dracon himself. Aesthetically speaking, I think this is one of my favorite quests. Ignore the glitching grate there, but the whole entire environment is gorgeous. The castle is great. And from the portal arises Lord Dracon himself. Hi. So a bunch of enemies were jumping through windows while we were getting to this point, and Ivan here decides to be a genius and stand in front of a window. 
It's it's like a hurricane, you know, you don't stay away from windows during a hurricane or a tornado. Vampires, hurricanes, they're basically the same thing. Except vampires can't come in your house unless you invite them. Hurricanes don't give a damn, they'll just come in if they want. Look at this skybox. It feels like something you would see in Dark Souls. The distant mystery, everything kind of blurring into the unknown. I like it, it's very atmospheric. What's great about the final fight is that it's balanced around you having just the house dracon gear with a blister wood weapon and some food. So they don't have to scale the quest based on what the player might have. You know, some quest bosses will crumble because the person playing is maxed and has, you know, tier 92 weapons and masterwork, trimmed masterwork gear or whatever. Here, everyone doing the quest has the same exact gear. So you basically have to focus on the mechanics. You can't just ignore them. I did die the first time around because I, uh, I ignored some of the mechanics. This is my favorite part of the quest. Okay, watch. Crestfallen, Veliaf just turns around and sulks. But like a five-year-old. But with that quest complete, we now have access to the Sun Spear Sword. Not the Sun Spear Spear, but the sword. We're not quite there yet. To do River of Blood, we need to do a few other prerequisite quests, such as All Fired Up. This is an easy one. You just light some beacons and then you're on your way. We may now participate in the Beacon minigame, which unlocks the Inferno Adds, the Ring of Fire, and the Flame Gloves. The Inferno Adds requires 92 fire making, so we're going to get that later. But we do want to get the Ring of Fire and the Flame Gloves, which requires 79 fire making. We don't have 79 fire making, but we can boost to light, I believe, the ninth beacon, which allows us to claim the Flame Gloves from King Rold. We can't use the gloves until 79 fire making, but at least we'll have them. With that little mini game out of the way, we can claim the Ring of Fire and the Flame Gloves from King Rold, and we'll deal with the Inferno ads at a later date. But while we're here, I think Captain Rovan might have a quest for us. Defender of Varrock is a prerequisite for River of Blood, so we gotta do it. It requires Blurite Ore. We got some extra Blurite Ore ages ago during the Night Sword quest, and I kept it in my bank just for this. Lightning is the natural enemy of the zombie. And quest complete. Time to move on to the more important quest. River of Blood, the final quest in the Myrek quest series, the Vampire quest series, is coming to an end here. And we're finally going to get ourselves the Sun Spear. I'm so excited. Look at this army decked out with holy sickles. Oh. That army can fly. I didn't expect to fight the weird immediately, so I didn't have a lot of food with me, but it turns out it's actually not that hard to fight, at least the first time around. You just gotta make sure you don't get hit by its special attacks. The Blood Geyser will pull under your feet and do damage to you, and the Sonic Attack will murder you unless you move back a few steps. So make sure you move back a few steps or else you'll get murdered. I'm not exaggerating, it's like a one-shot kill, at least according to the quest guide. And here it is, the Sun Spear. We make a Blisterwood Shaft, we attach the Sun Spear Sword and the Wolfbane Dagger, and we get the Sun Spear Spear. It can be a staff, it can be a spear, it can be a javelin. You can augment it, and you can buy it back after you disassemble it for 600k. It is the Iron Man's friend. As is usually the case, I died to the weird the first time around. Uh, I didn't really remember much of the fight, and I didn't really know what to expect. But you basically get sent to fighting other bosses you fought throughout the series, such as Vanstrom, Klaus, and Lord Dracon again. But the Lord Dracon fight is a lot easier because you can just kind of run away from him and kite him. He doesn't heal like he does in the regular fight against him in the previous quest. If you get too far away from him, he heals himself. It's kind of annoying. I swear this never happens. So Vanescula sends some Virewatch over, right? The first vampire she sent over got turned into ferals. But now she's convinced that her Virewatch will be safe. They'll be able to get across the River Salve without being affected. Okay? So the Virewatch fly over. The magic hits them. They turn into humans. So vampires turning back into humans. Would you walk back towards the other vampires? If it were you in that situation and you reverted from a vampire to a human... 
would you just casually stroll back to the vampires? Wouldn't you be a little confused, a little dazed, a little, I don't know, lightheaded at the very least? It's kind of just a, it was a weird scene. With the quest done, we now have access to the Sun Spear, one of the most convenient weapons in the game, especially for Iron Man, and especially for leveling invention. It's a tier 78 weapon that is very cheap to replace. It's great. After the quest, we can come to Venescula, who is at the top of Drakan's castle, and we can claim a blood essence from her. We're going to take the vampire blood essence because it's kind of like Soul Split for melee. I don't have any plans of really ever using it, but we have it. One of the other benefits of the Sun Spear is that it automatically burns, cremates, virus that you kill with it. So you get fire making XP, prayer XP, and there's a 20% chance, I believe it's 20% chance, of getting the reward as a drop that you would get from the columbarium keys if you had cremated it on a pyre and gotten the key and opened the thing, opened the, uh, the door. It just makes the loot better. So you're getting a bunch of combat XP, fast combat XP, because you can kill these things quickly since this thing is boosted against these guys. Prayer XP, fire making XP, it's great. If you're an Iron Man, it is invaluable. And if you do the elite Mortania diary tasks, you get even more XP when you're wearing the Mortania legs for. It is fantastic. The Sun Spear should be the primary goal when you're an Iron Man. I'm not getting to Prif. Prif's Innis is great, but the Sun Spear is just so good for Iron Man. It is ridiculous. Heroes welcome. The God V is returning to the Fremenic people. He is remembered as a god and a warrior and a hero. And we're going to meet him. Look who it is. It's the Fremenic God Hero V. He's so cool and powerful and impressive. I hope he's a significant character going forward. Damn it. This boss fight was quite easy, so I'm not going to talk much about it. It's the Abomination. It unlocks a boss fight you can do afterwards and get the Abomination Cape. I have no idea if anybody actually bothers with this boss, but the Abomination Cape does sell for quite a lot. I think it's because there's no demand and a very low supply. Anyway, I have some criticisms of this quest. First, you think it's going to be a quest about the hero that's returning. The hero V. It's not. It's actually about Dragonkin. The whole quest is about Dragonkin. V dies in the first act. My next criticism. There's like six Dragonkin in this quest, and they all have basically the same name. I'm not even exaggerating. At one point, right at the end of the quest, after this fight, they all show up in the same room, and their names are like Strissath, Kerfath, Falak, Shatath. It's ridiculous. They, they, their names have too many similar sounds and phonemes, and they all look the same, so you can't tell the difference between them. They're just lizard people. I do like the Dragonkin lore. Don't get me wrong, I think the lore is great. I like the whole mix of science and magic, it's, it's interesting. But I hate their names. My god, their names suck. Okay, so here are a bunch of the Dragonkin at the end of this quest. Calabath, Sackhearth, Carapac, Silcath, Phalax. Calabath, I, it's, it's ridiculous. And there's also other ones named like Calathax and... Silkath, and Shalakith, and Taraket, and Tarshak, and Torcus, and Vicendithath, and Zorgoth, and Calabath, and Lasthes, and Sakrath, and Strissath, and they have all these different classes of Necrocertes, and Dactyl, and Agra, and Nodon, and I, ooh, it's just, just call them, just, Steve, whatever, the quest is done. I got a Reaper assignment to kill General Grador. So we're giving that a whirl. I hate fighting God Wars Dungeon 1 bosses because I hate getting kill count. I cannot wait until I get 90 Slayer because then I'm immediately going to farm for the Intimidation Totem. Two of the pieces are easy to get. They're basically guaranteed. The third one is a rare drop from dinosaurs on Anachronia. You need 90 Slayer at a minimum to kill dinosaurs. You can safe spot one of the dinosaurs at level 90 slayer so that's what that's what i'll do i did that on my iron man and i'll do that here too this is my first time killing grador on this account i hate getting kill count and 
coming here and only being able to kill Grawdor maybe four or five times. It's annoying. With the Totem of Intimidation, you can create a portal in War's Retreat, teleport to the boss, create an instance, fight him, teleport out, do whatever you want to do, go back, walk right back into the boss room, kill him again. It's so nice. It's like God Wars Dungeon 2. You just get the kill count once, and you have one hour to kill the boss for as long as you want. You can leave and come back. It's great. Spoiler alert. Didn't get anything good from this. A little change of pace. I wanted to try something out. Since we unlocked the Lunar Spells, we have unlocked access to the Fire Urn spell. The great thing about this is that it fires an urn every one tick instead of every five ticks that it would take to fire an urn in a regular kiln or on a portable crafter. And if you fire it with a spell, you still get the benefit from the portable crafter. So I have about 600 soft clay and I'm going to make 300, give or take, because the portable crafter can give you extra urns, 300 decorated fishing urns. I'm going to fire them all with the spell, and we're going to see how much time it takes to do all this, to go from clay, and we're going to see how much profit we make, if any, from the 600 clay. This isn't an exhaustive test, I was just curious and I had the clay sit around, so I figured, yeah, let's try, why not? It took me about five or so minutes to form 323 urns from about 600 soft clay. Because fire runes cost more than water runes, I used a fire staff. What I should have done was bought an elemental staff for about two and a half mil, because an elemental staff counts as all elemental runes. Would have saved a little bit of money. It took about 10 minutes to fire all of those urns, and I ended up with 355 decorated fishing urns NR, which will sell for 2.1 mil. These were the runes I used. Spent about 214k in runes. Plus, if I bought the soft clay, it would cost about 600k in soft clay. So we're looking at an initial investment of about 800k. A little more than that. Say 900k. I ended up selling all the urns for a little over 2 mil. So in 15 minutes, I made about 1.1 mil. So you make about 4 mil an hour, maybe. If you're really committed, you might be able to make more. But since this was a very narrow test, you'd probably make... Closer to three and a half mil, maybe. Not bad, though. We're ending at the safes. I want to get 90 thieving. Because at 90 thieving, we can start player own ports. And we need to get started with that real soon, because it takes a long time to get anywhere with it. So, we will be doing the safe route in Asgarnia. Or, no, Kanda Kan Kandarin? Kandarin. Yes, Kandarin. The Kandarin route. Okay. So... I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Take care. <laughs>